appetite. So that's uh, so that's going to be uh, that's going to be good. So logistically, what uh, you know, I'll start Recording with. Recording in progress. Oh, yeah. My name is Ken Verkamen. That's uh, my law office is in Edison, and uh, I'm uh, kind of here to um, go over some things with wills and probate, but kind of steer people in the right direction so they. They just don't keep on putting off, putting off stuff um, because people become putter offers. And then we get calls on Friday at five o'clock. I need to get power of attorney over, you know, over my dad. I need to get a will done. I'm having surgery Monday. So the whole thing is try to get, try to get your stuff done now. So, um, you know, oftentimes people ask me, uh, Getty, you know, why, why do I need to have a will? Isn't everything going to my wife if it's joint? It goes, well, if it's, if everything was joint, that's correct. But that's not a reason not to have a will because both you guys are not going to live forever. That's not doing planning. That's just hoping that uh, you don't need to, uh, um, you know, do any preparation. So think about if someone does not have a will or if the will was not uh, properly uh signed or prepared, the procedure to distribute assets becomes much, much more complicated. Um, so let's say there's three kids. That means that all the kids need to sign, uh, agree upon who's going to be the administrator and sign a renunciation. That's it. And then that renunciation that's signed in front of a notary has to be filed with the surrogate and a fee paid. Well, that's that's in the states where everyone gets along. Sometimes people don't get along. So then uh, uh, one of the kids has to spend a, a lot of money to file a complaint to in the superior court and order show cause to have them become the administrator. So most people are, uh, you know, aren't saying, boy, I want to I want to give my kids more work and make them more complicated. No, most people says, listen, I want my kids to try to get along and it's better if you prepare ahead of time. Also, so if it has to go through this court route, they're going to be spending uh, three, four grand extra. Well, that's a lot more than the cost of a $500 will. Plus, if there's no will, then the administrator has to be bonded and the bond fee is usually a grand per year. Um, the other things you got to think about, if you know some people are, are younger, they don't have wills, um, they have minor children. Well, if something happens to both parents, uh, a total stranger determines who gets custody of the kids. That's a, a superior court judge. So you usually don't want to have a judge do it. You'd rather decide who you want. Some people put off who are young having wills. Well, we can't really decide who's going to be the uh, guardian. He goes, well, let's, uh, I'll make it easy for you. I'll say, if you couldn't come home for... Uh, two weeks, who do you want to watch your kids? And they'll say, well, I guess my mom or, okay, good. Well, they're getting older. He goes, yeah, but they're the best person now. You can always do an update to the will at any point in time as as you want. Um, and also remember, um, if someone doesn't have um, spouse, children, close relatives, the state of New Jersey gets the assets if there's no will. Well, who... Who would ever want the state of New Jersey to get their assets? So uh, really think about, let's see, if there's no will, it often causes fights, aggravations, sometimes lawsuits amongst the family. So, you know, when, when loved ones are grieving, you shouldn't give them one more thing to stress about and think about. So think about for you, who do you want to get your assets? Who you don't want to get your assets? Remember, it's your right to do with your money what you want. You know, if you if you know, you know, if you want to leave uh, most of your money to the Yellow uh, Dog Society, hey, that's that's your right. So one of the things, though, when the surrogate does uh, election with us, they uh, warn people about you uh, trying to do online documents not prepared by an attorney, because they said their problems they always see the biggest problems is when people do those, they don't sign them correctly. They're not done correctly. The witnesses aren't. So, you know, think about would you in this in this day, would you try to do your own electrical work? Would you try to do your own plumbing work? Would you try to do your own oil? Probably not. 
it's best to have a professional uh, do it, a professional that's going to do a self-proving will. And uh, so, uh, the old system um, of doing wills was much more complicated. You, you know, take a half a day off of work, drive to the attorney's office, fill out forms. And, uh, you know, right before COVID and during COVID, we realized, hey, let's try to make it easier. I'd say, uh, so most attorneys now, they can email uh, a questionnaire to someone. We have two questionnaires, one that where someone has minor children and the other, I call it the, uh, the Elks Club one, where someone can fill out on their iPhone, where they're basically saying, who's executive one, who's executive two, who's getting their, who's getting their stuff. Let's say, uh, and uh, so, so uh, the questionnaire is not that complicated. One of the, it's not that complicated because New Jersey did away with the New Jersey estate tax. Um, just, you know, who would have thought New Jersey reduced a couple taxes, did away with the estate tax, and there's no inheritance tax if it's going to spouse, children, uh, grandchildren, stepchildren. Um, the inheritance tax if it's going to brothers or sisters is 15%. The first, I mean, 11%, the first 25,000 is tax free. If it's going to bona fide charities, churches, library, foundation, uh, there's no tax. If it's going to out everyone else, there is a 15% tax, but most of those people would say, listen, I'm glad I'm getting something because otherwise I wouldn't get anything. All right, so the will questionnaire. You've typed in your name, then you're putting in who's executor one, who's executor two. You don't want to have joint executors. You're creating more, more work for them. Let's see. You know, they could be twins living together, but why create more work for more work for people? We, I was involved with an estate where they was foolish enough to have joint executors, and these two guys couldn't agree upon what color the sky was. Brother number one says, the sky is blue. The other one says, no, the sky is gray. You're stupid. You've always been stupid. So um, there's a reason. There's only one president of the United States at a time, so you have a number one, number two. Um, I mentioned the part about typing. Some of the uh, some of the seniors say, oh, "I'm not good with a computer, etc." I goes, "No problem. Let's like uh, let's resolve this." Like uh, I'll say, your granddaughter, your daughter lives like uh, two towns over. Tell them come over in the next uh, three weeks, and you're gonna give them five thousand dollars to do it. If your granddaughter won't come over and visit you, uh, and you're giving them five thousand uh, dollars, then you can, you can say. Um, no problem, uh, you know, uh, you don't have to come over, but I won't leave anything for you in the will. You know, try, we're trying to, we're, again, we're trying to make things easy for people. Okay, so you're listing who gets uh, your assets, you know, what percentages or who gets it, and you always want to have a clause that would indicate if uh, anyone passes away, who gets their share. Let's see, so... If someone's saying, okay, it's getting divided equally amongst my three kids, that's good. Uh, if any of the, uh, those children shall predecease, typically you want it going to their children, your grandchildren uh, on that side. And if they don't have any grandchildren, it goes to the, to the survivor. But remember, again, it's your right to do with, with your assets what you want. Uh, now, I said I said that part. Uh but certain assets um, don't pass under the will. They, uh, you know, uh, they pass by title or contract. So examples of that are if someone has uh, an IRA, 401k, something like that, automatically goes to the, to the survivor. The will can't change that. Some people have, um, you know, for example, house is owned husband and wife automatically goes to surviving spouse. The will can't change that. Sometimes people are separated. Um, I go, well, listen, I'd say, yeah, do you understand if you pass away, first your spouse gets that house and everything else. We we have to, you know, to, to change that, both people would have to sign a deed, but at least sometimes people can change on their, uh, their accounts if they're separated, who gets them? Uh, you know, it's the same thing. If someone is separated, probably a good idea to do a new power of attorney so you're not giving that spouse the power to do stuff. So, 
So write down, assets, uh, a will can't change if assets have a direct beneficiary. Now, it is a good idea to have direct beneficiaries because it makes it faster for people to, uh, you know, get things. Uh, we also recommend that people get an old fashioned like printout, make a photocopy or print it of, you know, who's, who gets assets, assets directly. But there's still, you still want to have a will because there's always assets that uh, do not have a direct beneficiary. All right. Next, specific bequest. What is a specific bequest? Uh, specific bequest. You're specifically giving something to, uh, you know, someone. Um, you know, you know. Sometimes the ladies say, "I want my jewelry to go to this particular daughter or granddaughter." Sometimes the uh, gentlemen say, "I want my uh, my firearms to go to a particular person that has firearms permit." Some people have family like, uh, things that they want uh, um, to go to. Uh, a particular person. Hey, that's fine. But I tell people, don't be crazy. One one time, a lady, she had uh, eleven pages worth of stuff, single spaced, and uh, it was just junk in the house that people that people would not have wanted. Uh, now, also, you can uh, you can give, um, you know, some people give monies to uh, to charities. Now, uh, I'm, I support giving money to charity. But I, I, on the other hand, I warn people that if you give a percentage of an estate to a charity, um, that means the attorney general has to get involved uh, and they have to approve the accounting. It's going to take them maybe a year to do that. If you just uh, leave a, uh, an amount to a charity, 10000 to uh, St. Cecilia's Church, 10000 to Our Lady of Peace, uh, you, know, you know, whatever you want, then... Once they get their money, then the attorney general's out and the attorney general's not requiring the accountant. So, so think about that when you're doing your bequest to charities. Yeah. In addition, we have what uh, we call uh, the reverse specific bequest. I leave nothing to, and you name that person. You don't give them a dollar, you don't put a reason. Nothing to that person. You know, it's a, because again, it is your right to, as long as you're competent, you can do what you want. Last year, a client uh, had uh, four kids and she asked, do I have to treat all my kids equally? Uh, one of my sons lives on the West Coast. We don't hear much from him. I go, well, okay. I'll ask you a couple questions, ma'am. Did he uh, send you a card or a call on Christmas, your birthday or Mother's Day? She he goes, nah, you know, we haven't heard from him in a couple of years. He goes, why would you give this bum anything? And the other thing with uh, with that kind of bum is if someone passed away, they would be the troublemaker that causes, you know, the most the most problem. They they'd be like, Where's my money? Where's my money? So this if more and more, by the way, people are not leaving their assets to their children. Not because they don't like their children. It's because their children could be grown. They already have their own house. And they'd rather give it to their grandkids to help pay for college and uh, maybe for a wedding or things like that. So, um, now we do have a clause when there's when they're young, they you know, they don't get the money outright when they're eighteen. If there's no will, by the way, they do get the money when they're eighteen. Instead, we usually say they get some when they're twenty two, twenty five, and thirty. But the executor can expend as much money as is needed for health, education, maintenance, support. So uh, my son went to. Uh, who's a South Brunswick grad and in the South Brunswick Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, he went to University of Miami. You know, I read that the uh, tuition there is $90,000 a year. So if uh, think about maybe you want to give the money for, for grandkids. Uh, but again, importantly, have a clause that says they don't get when they're, when they're 18 uh, because how many 18s would have done smart things with money? 
if there's minor children, uh, you have someone set forth as the trustee of the money. It's usually the same person as the executor. The trustee, like uh, all they need to do is go to a uh, you know, brokerage account like Merrill Lynch and set up an, uh, a bro an account under that kid's social security number. But the person who controls it is that trustee. The, uh, the guardian is the person who holds the, ch the children, the guardian of the children. Uh, and it can be the same person. It can be something different. So um, they don't have to... Be and uh, they don't have to live they don't have to live in the united states it's better but you know some sometimes clients goes i don't kenny i don't got anyone in the united states okay fine okay i've already said i'm going to repeat it make sure you have a self-proving will there was an old way of doing wills and the person signed then there's two witnesses but then one of the two witnesses had to go and sign papers with the county surrogate saying they were the witness and it became difficult sometimes to find a witness or sometimes a witness would say, you know, uh, well, I won't do it unless you pay me $500. You know, self-proving will, person signs twice, the witnesses sign twice uh, in front of the notary, then the notary or attorney signs twice. So make sure that you have the attorney do a self-proving will and also have a, a clause that says no bond is required. Yeah. A will is um, uh, a will is is good for is good forever. I use the word it's uh, it never it never becomes obsolete. Um, however, though sometimes there's reasons to change the will. Our rule of thumb on the trustees is: can they drive to the bank and the surrogate's office and walk up a flight of steps? If they're if they're older, disabled, maybe there's someone else in the family that can do it. You know, it's, you know, people go, oh, I feel, I, I feel bad. Uh, you know, I, you know, one of my oldest, he goes, don't have your oldest, have, have the one who's the best. Next, only the original will can be admitted to probate, not a photocopy. It's still a good idea to scan it and email to yourself, executor one, executor two, the trustees, let them know where the original's at. Don't put the original in a safe deposit box. People can't get to the safe deposit box. Let's see. Only uh, just get a fireproof box, throw it under the bed. Uh, be careful leaving uh, things in the basement because periodically there's floods. There's usually never floods in in people's in people's bedrooms. So uh, that's a little bit that you need to know about wills. Not that complicated. But the whole idea is getting things done. Get them done. Uh, don't be a Carl. What's a Carl? Who's Carl? Carl was his retired engineer in Edison. And, you know, he came in and I went over the things I recommended. And he goes, oh, I want to read up. I want to read up on it. You know who those engineers are? They always want to read stuff. They want to read the manual on their car. They, I goes, Carl, you don't need to read anything. I went to law school. I passed the bar. You know, I go to seminars. You know, I give seminars, people. I wrote a book on this. You don't need to read anything. I said, Carl, when I had uh, uh, my knee surgery, I read nothing all about knee surgeries. I just said to the doctor, do the, be do the best you can so I can be out running again. That's it. All right, Carl, you know, Carl wants to read up. Two years later, Carl's daughter calls up. Do we have his will? Because she found our, you know, our business card and some of our brochures. Answer: No. He wanted to read up on it. He never got it. Never got it done, and the family got screwed. So, if you don't have a will done, uh, you're 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 kind of screwing your family. It's like if you owned a house that had a basement, and there's a pipe that's leaking, and you just ignored it, saying, "Hey, I'll let my kids take care of that after I die. That's their problem, not mine." You wouldn't do that. You take care of it. Um, so you don't need to read stuff. Um, you know, and by the way, um, some uh, some companies now uh, provide um, what's called a uh, uh, wills through something called a legal plan. So I'm putting in the chat some of the companies that uh, um, 
you know, they may have different, either MetLife legal plan, ARAG legal plan, legal lease. You know, it's a good benefit for, for people. Next topic I'm going to talk about is revocable trusts. I'd say, yeah, uh, my mother-in-law lives in, uh, in Monroe now, but, uh, you know, when she was in her house, she'd call me every other year. She goes, I want to come in and get a trust done. I would say, why do you think you need to have a trust? Were you watching Susie Orman on TV? She says, oh, yes, I was. I go, Susie Orman is right if you live in New York, California, Florida, where the probate process is a nightmare. But New Jersey probate only costs $180. So I asked people, why do you think that you need to spend all this money having a, uh, you know, spending three, four, six thousand dollars $6,000 setting up elaborate trust? He goes, I want to avoid probate. Why? Uh, uh, my friends said I should, but your friends don't live in New Jersey. Remember, us attorneys, we make, we make more money when we do these trusts, but I want to be fair with people. Is it what they need? So, uh, let's, you know, um, why don't people need to spend five, $6,000 on a revocable trust? Probate in New Jersey is easy and expensive. Um, to probate the will, all the surrogate needs is um, the original will, uh, original death certificate, check for $180, and we prepare James, the information sheet. Oh, you're back. Let's see. Ken, can you just repeat the last uh, two seconds? Because we lost you for a minute. Okay. Are we on? Okay. So, yeah. to probate the will, um, you need the original will, death certificate, check for about $180. Let's see, uh, the attorney typically will type up the information sheet for the surrogate. So once someone makes an appointment, uh, the surrogate says, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here, sign here. And then uh, uh, then you're good to go. Okay. Uh, our revocable trust does not protect assets from nursing home. It doesn't protect assets from taxes. Um, some of the trust salesmen say, oh, well, you know, uh, uh, you know, a, a trust is confidential and a will is a public record, but who really care? If you're gone, do you really care if people know who are getting uh, your, your stuff? By the way, the will does not list assets unless you're making a specific bequest. So in our will questionnaire, uh, we're not even asking people you know, details on accounts, things like that. We ask them what real estate you have, and ballpark is your assets more or less than $13 million because federal state tax ta starts at $13 million. And maybe some of those richy people in, uh, in Princeton on the lake have more than $13 million, but most of us South Brunswick and regular people uh, are not uh, $13 million people. Uh, there's, there's no real, most people don't need to avoid probate in New Jersey. Yeah, if you, if you spend the money and have a trust done, you're avoiding probate, uh, and uh, the day the day someone dies, the, the trustee can start doing stuff. But sometimes, you know, you know, in a way, what's the rush? You still got to go through. You know, sometimes you eventually got to sell the house. So, you always ask people, why do you think you need to have a trust? You know, there's a different kind of trust called an irrevocable trust, uh, Medicaid trust. What that does is you're no longer owning the property; it's irrevocable. There's a new deed. The uh, the deed is filed with the county surrogate. You don't own the property anymore. You're not the trustee. Then you got to wait, uh, hope that you don't go into nursing home for five years. The attorneys and professionals that do the uh, Medicaid irrevocable trust charge twelve fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. Basically, that's one month in a, nurse, in a nursing home. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, you know, the people usually ask me questions about, you know, protecting assets in nursing homes. They're not the senior citizens. It's usually their kids that want to protect their inheritance. Uh, and people are in, uh, I still, I see people in my office periodically. i got to fix my flag. Uh, but, you know, daughter brings mom in because, you know, the daughter says, oh, mom's concerned about if she has to go to a nursing home. I could tell mom wasn't concerned whatsoever. It was the daughter. 
I go to the daughter, you know, okay, you want to protect, spend, I go out, you go out and buy a long-term care insurance on your mom. Well, I don't want to spend my money. Then the daughter goes, what did I, what, what did I do? I go, well, me, hey, let's see. I'm not transferring all my assets out of my name, so I have to go into the, uh, you know, the dirty, smelly nursing home. Jeez, I, I, I was a paper boy delivering newspapers in the rain when it was 38 degrees. I, you know, I worked hard my whole life. I want to go in one of the best nursing homes that exist. I want to go into the nice one. If there's money left over afterwards that my kids are going to get, that's fine. But again, why should I go into the crappy nursing home so my son, Dr. Brennan, can have a, have a bigger boat? You know, I remember like uh, both uh, Rockefeller and Carnegie, they didn't like uh, leave their kids as billionaires, millionaires. They gave away their assets to charities, let the kids work on their own. Uh, I do want to point out that anyone who attends one of our seminars, uh, if they contact us and fill out the short form in 30 days from the seminar, we do a, uh, we do a, a free like, a consult with them. Uh, otherwise, it's $200. The last thing I'm going to touch, though, upon uh, trust is um, we often put trust within the will. That's not a revocable trust. Um, so a common example is I mentioned uh, when there's minors, they don't get the money till they're 21 or if they, you know, their kids could be 22, 25, 30. Some people have kids that are wayward on say, uh, uh, where they have alcohol problems, drug problems. So they can set up at what's called a, uh, um, you know, a trust within the will, a testamentary trust. Uh, one of the, the executor can be the trustee and, um, you know, pay for, you know, pay for that person but it's discretionary, so it can't be. Um, they don't lose any like uh, social security benefits they're getting. It's not subject to taxes, and it's not subject even to alimony or or support orders. Um, we got involved with a probate matter out of Somerset County, and uh, there was a uh, a motion to compel the trust to pay the ex-wife, uh, you know, uh, spousal support, you know, uh, alimony. Uh, I represent the estate. I go, you know, it's a t it's a, a testamentary trust, Judge. You know that's why you set it up. You know it's the only thing that taxes. You know you t uh, the IRS can't get to it. No one can get to it. And the judge says, yeah, that's you know that's correct. Uh, you know that's why people do it. You know, but you know you and if someone is a alcoholic, if an alcoholic gets a hundred dollars, they spend a hundred on booze. So we had to kind of protect them from. From themselves. The people that have special needs kids, they're usually smart enough to know, hey, let's, I want to set up a special needs trust for my child. And there's attorneys that are experts on that. You know, so think about sometimes, you know, your kids are, are, are wayward. All right. Uh, so we've touched upon wills. We've touched upon Revocable trust, testamentary trust, irrevocable trust. Let's talk about powers of powers of attorney. Will takes care of your assets if you pass away. What a power of attorney does is you're giving the power while you're alive to uh, someone that can uh, help you out. They can pay your bills. If the house needs to be sold, the house can be sold. If things need to be purchased for you, they can purchase it. They can act legally upon upon your behalf. The power of attorney is effective either right away or only upon disability. Um, if it's effective right away, then it's called a, a durable power of attorney, and it stays effective even if someone becomes disabled, incapacitated. Um, if it's effective only upon disability, that's a springing power of attorney, uh, only spr if someone becomes disabled pursuant to the statute. I had a client last year who goes, Kenny, I'm a carpenter. I don't understand legal stuff. Explain to me in carpenter language, this power of attorney. No problem, Freddie. Listen, if it's effective right away, that's the durable one. Your son, who's your agent, can steal all your money right away. If it's effective only upon disability, he has to get a note from a doctor before he steals your money. Knowing that, do you trust your son? He goes, I trust my son with my life. Well, good. Okay, then, then let's like uh, make uh, um, let's say uh, let's make it effective right away. Uh, now, now, 
the power of attorney, uh, there, some, of the, some of the banks and institutions were giving people a hard time. So New Jersey legislature said, listen, if they're doing business in New Jersey, um, these banks, they have to honor it if it makes reference to the New Jersey statute. But it has to make, say, make reference to Section 2 of PL 1991, C, uh, 95, C46, 2B-11, and those cheap things online don't have that stuff. Have a real attorney do your stuff. Also, though, we do recommend a new power of attorney be signed every five years. With the will statute, a will never expires. You know, a will is good forever, but with a power of attorney. Um, there's no statute that says how long it's good for. So we usually say, listen, let's sign a new one every five years. The important thing is, though, get your power of attorney done. Get your power of attorney done. Once a week, we get a call from someone uh, it says I need to get I need to get power of attorney over mom, dad, uh, my brother, my kid. No, you can't get power of attorney over anyone. They have to affirmatively give it to you. You know, so you know, I I usually I'll well my office they'll ask the question. Can okay maybe someone can't ta type there in the hospital, but can they can they talk to us over the phone and say what they want? If the answer is no, well, it's too late for us to do the power of attorney. It should have been done sooner. Get your stuff done. Yeah. I recommend with the power of attorney, after it's signed, scan it, email it to yourself, number uh, agent one, agent two, email it to your fi uh, financial advisor, your account. Anyone that you know kind of does business this way, they know that you've picked one of your kids to... Uh, to help you out. That is that is important, you know. And this way, you know, have that way it's in their in their records that uh, there's this family member that can help you out. Next, we're going to talk about uh and this is our last document um because I'm only, I typically only go about 35 minutes is the living will advance directive. Your will takes care of your assets if you pass away. Your power of attorney, you're giving someone the ability to help you out if you're if right away. What the living will is, it's you can no longer talk. You can probably never talk again. You're not gonna talk. The doctor said no more. So you're giving instructions to hospitals and doctors saying, listen. I don't want to be on feeding tubes. I don't want to be on machines, respirators. Now, we're not talking about if someone is like at ShopRite uh, buying uh, lettuce and they have, uh, you know, uh, a heart attack. It's where, you know, someone is some kind of in a coma. They have some type of uh, terminal condition, you know, and um, the doctor says they're never going to get up again. The, it's important because it's an early document for you so your family does not have to go through with the trauma of what what to do you know you know it's a, so it's an important it's an important document to to have um i remember you know because one, one time doctor asked me Okay, should basically should we remove life support today? I go, geez, doctor, I feel I feel bad. I mean, you know what the right decision is for someone who's ninety two years old that's never going to, uh, you know, open their eyes again. But you hate to be the one to say, yeah, doctor, go ahead, go, you know, turn turn the switch off. Uh, we've uh, so in our powers of attorney, um, we have what's called a HIPAA authorization. We also put that in the uh, living will. You know, that way you're, you're, in addition to saying what your wishes are, someone for the doc, you know, the doctors can talk to. And it's very, very important because, you know, typically there's one person in the family that, um, you know, is, is always helping out. And then there's one that doesn't help out, but then suddenly someone's in a, if finally at the end, someone's in a hospital 
and one of the kids uh, might be barging in saying, okay, I'm in charge now. This is what we're going to do. And the answer is no, you're not in charge. Someone else is in charge. And this is what, this is what it is. So think about it. Now, um, there's, there's been many advances in science where uh, the doctors can do things that, you know, no one ever imagined. So the doctors will, in fact, talk to whoever you pick to say, listen, would you want us to try this or what, what would you want to do? Now, I kind of joke when I was first married uh, uh, 33 uh, years ago, uh, I'm redoing my documents, uh, my wife and I, and um, in the living will, my wife says, oh, I could never let them, you know, you know, you're all lovey-dovey when you're first married. I could never let them remove life support. I go, okay, fine. Let's say I'll leave my father as, you know, the person in the pa in the power of attorney, right? But then you have years later where the uh, spouse says, "Wait a minute! If you die, I get eight hundred thousand dollars tax free through life insurance. Why why keep why keep him alive?" The clauses in our living wills that uh, you know you have um, you know DNR a post authorization and organ donation. After you sign the living will, uh, scan it, email it to yourself, your number one, your number two, and your primary doctor. You know, the great thing with like scanning it is and emailing it, yet you have it, at least I have an iPhone. It's on, even if I don't have internet, 